I'm going to talk a little bit about mobile marketing, um, and you know, I'll, I'll share a few anecdotes about Gupshop as well, but focus more on the broader theme around mobile and what's uh, what's going on. Uh, just a quick intro: uh, I founded uh, a company called uh, the company is called Weberu, but our service is called Gupshop. Uh, it's the same thing, uh, SMS Gupshop. For those that may not be aware of what it means, it means chit chat, um, which for a social or a group messaging service like ours, it's a, it's a very appropriate name. And our vision uh, is very simple. Uh, it's to enable group messaging uh, for all, and you know, for every mobile subscriber out there. Okay, uh, we see it in sort of two forms, large groups and small groups. Broadly, they, they behave in slightly different ways. Large groups tends to be one-to-many, broadcast-oriented communication. Small groups uh, tend to have uh, many-to-many uh, sort of peer-like communications. So slightly different behavior, but essentially group messaging. And, uh, you know, we, we enable that on, on SMS, on text messaging. Uh, the, the benefit of which is you get, it, it works on literally every mobile device, right? It doesn't need smartphones, no data connectivity required. It just works on literally each and every uh, mobile handset. Uh, so, you know, you, you get, uh, you sacrifice a little bit of the richness uh, graphics, video, things like that, but but what you trade off for is massive uh, ubiquity, uh, massive reach. So we'll talk about uh, of mobile marketing and mobile campaigns. So you know, it just seems uh, not even what 20 years ago, where you know, telephon, uh, telephony used to mean you know uh, the sort of the wired wired device, and today, of course, look at the devices. Probably most of the people in this room are carrying uh, a, a lot of a lot of changes. Uh, you know, one of the most interesting things is the fact that the the mobile adoption worldwide has been has been simply uh, massive. Uh, about eighty percent of reaches eighty percent of the world. You know, about four and a half to five billion mobile subscribers worldwide. Right? We've never had such a large uh, percentage of the world connected uh, by any media whatsoever. And you compare it with uh, you compare it with other. Uh, at least with uh, telephony here, or even the internet, uh, which reaches barely you know a quarter of the world, so just massive, three to four times bigger worldwide, and in emerging markets or in countries like India, it's even more skewed, right? Uh, what do we have? About 700 million mobile subscribers here, and maybe 50, 70 million web users. So it's about 10 to one, maybe 15 to one. Uh, you know, that's the size of mobile. Uh, uh, the size of the mobile user base versus, let's say, the web uh, user base. So, just, just very, uh, you know, just uh, this is this has been easily, you know, the, the biggest sort of media revolution uh, over the last, uh, you know, as you can see, over the last literally just uh, three or four years, uh, where it just exploded uh, in a in a massive way. Uh, like I said, in the last uh, last few years, almost, uh, you know. Uh, driving, uh, just having 90% uh, of the world uh, uh, covered uh, with uh, with mobile adoption. Uh, I talked about, uh, you know, I talked about some numbers as well. So it just it just become one of those devices. I mean, you compare it with uh, with uh, television, with print, with almost any other media as well. It just uh, phenomenal reach uh, compared to others. So uh, there's there's a ton of anecdotes. People use it in interesting ways. These are just uh, just a few uh, small examples from uh, different parts of the world, you know, uh, being being used for uh, con consuming content, uh, for uh, doing transactions in a very sort of hyper local uh, way, uh, you know, ability to pay uh, for devices as well, you know, commerce uh, starting to take off, uh, where you know. So I think it just keeps, uh, and, and this is going to continue growing, right? You have um, in India with the recent 3G spectrum auctions as well, I expect uh, much more uh, much more adoption of mobile and uh, mobile-enabled services uh, growing, uh, growing uh, dramatically. Uh, so when I, you know, when we look at it, a lot of the press uh, tends to be, a lot of the coverage tends to be focused on smarter devices, right? It's, uh, they're exciting, they're, uh, they, they enable enable a lot of new use cases and such. So, so this, clearly the smartphones uh, are, are driving uh, a lot of the buzz, a lot of the excitement. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, we should also not forget the, the popular devices, uh, the, the mass market devices, 
the 80-90% of the mobile subscriber base that to this day still uses uh, basic devices. And uh, on these devices, sometimes, you know, the only thing that works is voice or SMS. Uh, there's nothing else uh, that, you know, sometimes it's an affordability issue, right? So it's, well, sometimes it's an availability issue. It may not even, uh, 3G may not be available. Sometimes data connectivity may not be available. But even if it is, it's an affordability issue, right? Like say over the next uh, few years, just because 3G is available doesn't mean everyone can afford it. Uh, and then even you get past affordability, it's also the conditioning issue, right? There's plenty of users who've never used the web, right? There's uh, three quarters of the uh, or 75, 80% of the world that's just never used the web. You go and show a, a really smart device, I mean, they're not saying, okay, which, you know, which are the five websites uh, that I should visit. I mean, you need to start educating them uh, about web to begin with before uh, they, they dive onto those devices. So I think, you know, when you, when you start talking about four or five billion users, it's such a large market. It's not monolithic by any stretch. There's huge diversity and there's large, large pockets of users with, with very different behaviors. Uh, so even as a lot of exciting things happen on, uh, on smarter devices, uh, I think one of the, the less covered but perhaps far more significant aspect of the mobile is, is, is sort of the popular devices, the mass market devices, connecting people. And while they're admittedly uh, simpler, cheaper, um, you know, less capable, but it's for exactly those reasons that it has the kind of reach that it has. So... So I think you know, uh, I, I would I would recommend sort of thinking about uh, these these two phenomena slightly differently. Uh, certainly, smartphones, uh, you know, just sort of have completely revolutionized the the user experience, um, as as we keep uh, hearing about in lots and lots of uh, uh, interesting ways. Uh, but on the flip side, the popular devices, right, still still dominate the market by a huge segment. Uh, by, by a huge, uh, uh, you know, huge amount, and it's going to—it's probably going to stay that way uh, for for quite a while, while to come. Um, and uh, even in these, when you look at the mass market devices, you see text messaging still is the lowest common denominator. Um, about what about six trillion uh, text messages uh, sent just in the la uh, in the last year, and all forecasts show massive and continuing growth. Uh, 50, 75 percent year-over-year growth in these kind of numbers. Also, these uh, six trillion messages translate to about 150 to 200 billion dollars worth of revenues for operators worldwide, right? Which still, to this day, after voice, remains sort of the second largest uh, revenue stream for them, and in fact, far more profitable uh, than data, uh, because you know it's it's much cheaper. It costs a lot less for the operators to send those text messages even as uh, they can charge a lot for it. So immensely popular with uh, consumers, um, immensely popular also with operators because it's profitable. And, uh, you know, just continues to be, uh, you know, because it's the uh, lowest common denominator, social communications will always sort of gravitate to or, you know, use the, the common platform that everybody can use, right? I mean, just because you carry an iPhone, you can't, uh, you know, you're not going to send a photo to somebody uh, in case they don't have the, uh, the, the same device. So, so I think uh, you'll see uh, text messaging sort of continuing to be the, the driver of sort of mass media, mass communications uh, in a way. So mobile is uh, clearly, uh, you know, it's, it's emerging as a mass medium with far greater reach than any, any medium uh, heretofore. Uh, clearly it's any time. I mean, people... You can reach folks uh, just about uh, any time, uh, anywhere, right? You never leave home without it. Uh, people, people may forget their clock, may forget their wallet, can't forget the mobile phone. Um, it just feels like you're not, you're not connected. You can't, can't even leave it, you know, you take it with you to the bathroom or, or what have you. Um, similarly, anyone, right, virtually anyone, as you think about it, uh, kind of the, uh, the adoption of these devices. So, so given all that, uh, you know, uh, given the, the mobile landscape, um, how, you know, how should we think about uh, mobile marketing? What does that mean uh, for the marketers in this room? What does that mean for uh, entrepreneurs as you, as you enable uh, mobile marketing? And what does it mean for consumers to sort of, uh, you know, to experience uh, mobile marketing and consume the various services? 
So I think uh, before we think about the mobile marketing life cycle, uh, you know, I think uh, we should we should start or think about the purchasing life cycle as you know, as you may be familiar with. Uh, typically, any any customer uh, that that purchases an item first, they have to be aware. Uh, that that you know that item is available. They have to generate interest and desire. Uh, finally, when they're ready to buy, you know they've done their research. If it's a complex item, if you're buying a camera or an insurance policy, uh, you know it's not it's not an impulse purchase. You need to you need to think about it, do your research, and so on. Uh, when you're ready to purchase, uh, you, you sort of commit the uh, the action, and then depending on the products, generally uh, you may come back for a repeat transaction. And then you may refer your friends uh, to the uh, to the service as well. So if you sort of think about the entire uh, sort of purchasing life cycle, um, then the the marketing uh, the, the life cycle of a marketing campaign sort of mirrors uh, mirrors that as well. Uh, and what it needs to achieve at different stages uh, depends on, of course, the customer's stage in their uh, purchase life cycle. So broadly speaking, uh, you know, in the in the early stages of life cycle, uh, a marketer needs to achieve branding, uh, which would help uh, increase uh, the the awareness of their products and in, in generate interest uh, in in their products. And uh, you know, so it may be something as simple as you know, okay, drink Coke, drink Pepsi. Um, you're just sort of creating uh, awareness of the product. Uh, once for for people that are sort of ready to purchase, uh, you want to acquire those customers, right? Uh, if you're uh, if you're selling electronic goods, if you're selling uh, financial services and so on, you need to you need to acquire those leads, and those are acquisition driven campaigns uh, to to get people to come in buy to do the, the do the purchase uh, transaction. And lastly, right, uh, it's not enough uh, for them for a user to do the first transaction, as you know, uh, you know, it's far cheaper to get an existing customer to come and buy again than to acquire a new customer. So, so it's important to engage those customers, to keep them engaged, even if they have purchased the item. Uh, you keep them uh, affiliate. You keep them. Uh, you keep them continuing to associate with the brand, uh, to learn more about the product that they bought, uh, to educate them, to engage them uh, through a variety of means, and. Once you do that, you can bring them back uh, for the repeat transactions. Uh, you can create a positive buzz, uh, positive word of mouth that can then drive uh, referrals for uh, for your products as well. Uh, and you know, uh, just a few small examples. I'll go through some uh, case studies along each of these cases. But uh, a a branding campaign might uh, you know might involve uh, SMS campaigns that you you, you send out. Uh, send out messages. Uh, you can uh, you can drive. You know you, know, you can do in-app uh, advertising or, or in-app placement, if you will, um, as well as uh, sort of you know purchasing uh, a lot of app inventory uh, for for clicks. Uh, that that helps you drive uh, branding. But once uh, users respond to any of those things, uh, either they, they, there's a keyword response to an SMS campaign. Or a click through on a on a VAP uh, URL, um, or clicking on the uh, item in the app, or downloading the your app. Uh, you know, any of those would be those would be actions uh, that uh, that where you've acquired or nearly acquired a customer. Okay, and then finally, uh, for engagement, uh, the tools for that include you know creating uh, let's say SMS based mobile communities. Uh, I'll talk about some uh, case studies there in a second, uh, or uh, you know, or uh, sort of continuing to uh, follow up uh, through uh, yeah through through text alerts, uh, through apps, through contests, and so on, which gets which gets people, uh, which keeps them engaged and keeps them uh, coming back. So uh, now, of course, for uh, all of these, you know, uh, the, the the broadly speaking, the tools available. Uh, are certainly text messaging. I mean, this sort of reaches uh, the, the widest audience, but uh, uh, in and of itself can be somewhat uh, limited. Uh, certainly, you can't do you know graphics and 
uh, and visual branding, uh, things like that. Uh, apps, of course, you know, very, very rich, uh, can do, can be very interactive. And uh, web ads is probably somewhere in the, in the middle. Uh, and usually, you know, campaigns could involve multi you know, uh, m multiple aspects of these uh, combined together. You could run an SMS campaign that drives traffic uh, to, uh, to your app or to your website uh, where you can offer the richer experience, but even people, if they don't click through, would still be able to receive those, uh, those SMS uh, text messages. So I think, uh, you know, across, uh, across these three areas, so let's take, uh, let's take some examples, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, in terms of branding. Uh, certainly inside, uh, you know, inside apps, uh, placement, in-app placement, can be uh, can be a very interesting way where uh, a, a a user who's not necessarily looking for that particular uh, product would would come across it. Uh, you can get impressions, create uh, you know create a, a visual connect. Uh, certainly, um, uh, or or even in uh, text messaging. I mean, this is this is an example of an alert. But uh, you know, in terms of uh, let's say launching a new store, launching a new service. Uh, we've had airlines uh, sort of launching new routes, uh, announcing it broadly. So creating awareness, right? Creating uh, brand awareness, saying uh, we are open for business, uh, we are ready to do this. Um, you know, uh, we've had uh, this is one example uh, from the UK, and we've had a, a similar campaign, in fact, also with Pepsi uh, in India as well, where they've combined. Uh, sort of uh, a, a branding campaign along with uh, an engagement campaign. Uh, so what they do is, uh, you know, create a, create a special response keyword and uh, put, it, uh, put it on their uh, collateral, on their box, uh, inside, inside the bottle cap, for example, or on the label, um, and uh, using that to uh, sort of, you know, uh, the, the, the responses for that uh, can be it can be uh, you know have been uh, have been fairly large in terms of getting people uh, aware of it. It spreads by word of mouth. Uh, word of mouth gets them engaged, uh, gets them to come back, or or just you know have fun with the brand uh, that they are that they are already uh, consuming. In terms of uh, acquisition, uh, you know I think you, you're trying to you're looking to acquire uh, a customer, so. Let's say in uh, inside uh, inside applications, uh, you you know, uh, map for example in a in a map application, um, you can you can provide very contextual placement uh, of uh, of ads that can drive uh, that can that can immediately drive leads uh, for for your product or services uh, for your store. That can help uh, you know, uh, it gets you it helps you acquire a user that's ready to purchase. That's perhaps in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, uh, that's uh, location is certainly a unique thing that uh, that the mobile medium uh, enables. But uh, acquiring uh, acquiring users just as they are uh, ready to to purchase, um, and uh, and uh, contextual placement in, um, in you know, I think. Uh, let me see. Another uh, here's an example of uh, a text uh, campaign where we've had uh, people uh, delivering coupons uh, based on you know based on responses. So so for example, for 20% off on uh, on uh, Gap shirts or uh, you know to get uh, discounted LCDs and LEDs uh, uh, televisions, you can uh, respond with a certain keyword. And uh, it, it depends when they respond with a keyword, either they get more um, information or can uh, immediately do a, a click to call um, back to the call center where the call center can close, you know, provide information and, and close the deal. Uh, we've had, uh, in fact, on Gapshav, we've had uh, a lot of uh, uh, commerce uh, driven campaigns, uh, literally, where the ROI, right, uh, the, for about 30 or 40 percent cost of sales, meaning uh, for a hundred rupee item, uh, the, the the cost of marketing or the cost of first time user acquisition was about 30 to 40 percent of the sale price. Okay, which uh, which is fairly good because if you think about it, when the customer comes back for a for a repeat purchase, uh, 
the, the effective cost of acquisition goes down to about you know, 10, 15, 20%, which almost any product can support or usually allocates about that much uh, for cost of acquisition or cost of marketing. So once that happens, I think that's a huge inflection point in terms of enabling mobile commerce. I mean, you know, clearly, even, even in the uh, history of online advertising, uh, the switch from display ads to search ads was really driven by the fact that as soon as, uh, soon as you could acquire a user's cost effectively, uh, then the ad revenue uh, just shoots up because, because advertisers are not being sold ad campaigns anymore. Uh, you know, you don't need to... It's all sort of ROI-driven, which means it, it works, the math works for the advertiser, so they come back for more, and they want to drive more sales. The, the more they spend, uh, the more they sell, and it's in a sustainable way. So uh, in, at least in our experience, uh, we are seeing that uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, one of the largest uh, retailers, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, or they've been selling uh, sort of LCD TVs, cameras, electronics. Uh, we've had, you know, flashcards. I think uh, even uh, sort of luxury items uh, are sort of starting to be sold this way. The, the surprising thing is, right, it's not just... Uh, Tier one and tier two, uh, or tier one towns, as you as you'd think, obviously. But about uh, two thirds of the transactions came in from uh, tier two and three towns, uh, which were interestingly not just driven not driven by price alone, but by choice and convenience. Right? Uh, if you are in if you are in Indore or Bhubaneswar, uh, you know, in sort of uh, smaller towns in India, these items are simply not available. Right, uh, that brand, let's say a MacBook Pro or uh, a brand, a certain brand of television, or you know, uh, uh, eight or sixteen gig pen drive. I mean, these are sort of uh, sort of higher end items or niche items that tend not to be available in these towns, but simply through uh, through mobile, uh, they can easily access it, and the next day it's sort of delivered uh, to them. Uh, where perhaps they can pay cash on delivery or sort of credit card uh, up front, either way. Uh, but these kind of, uh, these kind of interesting uh, successes uh, board uh, very well for, the, uh, for not just mobile marketing and advertising, but also for the emergence of mobile commerce. Uh, and I think we are in the, in the very early stages of that uh, inflection point. Um, you know, another uh, sort of huge thing we've seen are, are around engagement campaigns, okay? Um, I think a lot of, uh, I mean, if you think about uh, a lot of online advertising, right, even search advertising tends to be focused around acquisition, right? You, you place a contextual keyword, you get the clicks, you convert, you get the purchase done, and, uh, you know, everyone goes home happy. Uh, and that's fine, right? That works very well, uh, has, has been very successful. But... Uh, the ongoing engagement to drive repeats and referrals uh, has has not been as much of a focus uh, for most marketers, but uh, we're seeing that mobile uh, and uh, you know text messaging in particular is enabling that in a, in a lot of interesting ways. You know, here's a here's a campaign, uh, sort of a text to screen campaign where uh, people can respond uh, to a certain ad, and then the response is, is tabulated and displayed sort of instantly. Uh, back to the to the users right there, so it allows you know people to engage with a brand uh, and just uh, right then right there. So that creates uh, creates for uh, interesting uh, dynamic. You know here's a campaign uh, where sort of a large uh, holiday uh, holiday group uh, company was uh, was running uh, SMS campaigns to drive uh, you know to to both. Uh, Engage customers uh, or prospects, uh, as well as uh, sort of both building awareness as well as uh, uh, generating leads during the during the holiday season. So uh, you know, running uh, running contests or uh, also offering tips around you know the best places to visit, uh, exotic holidays, different kinds of camp. Uh, you know, uh, just just educating people on what options are available. Uh, getting people to engage back with the brand uh, sort of drives uh, drives interesting behavior. Uh, this is an example on uh, sort of on on WAP, where uh, you know patient uh, participants answered uh, uh, questions on the life and uh, life and work of uh, uh, Da Vinci, and uh, and winners receiving 
sort of uh, receiving invitations to the art show. So it's sort of very, very contextual, you know, by definition, people who are responding. I think the, the key thing about engagement campaigns is you, you end up self-selecting your passionate uh, followers, your passionate consumers who really uh, engage with the brand. Uh, they like to, uh, you know, they like to interact with it and are, are sort of your most loyal customers uh, so uh, who, who really sort of deserve the reward because that drives uh, referrals for you and repeat transactions as well. Um, you know, so building communities uh, for a variety of things, for creating a connect with a brand. We've had a lot of uh, TV programs uh, while, you know, while, of course, uh, uh, TV is a rich medium, you know, audiovisual, a lot of excitement. But, uh, you know, these, uh, these uh, programs want to continue uh, engaging with their viewers, uh, even when the TV switched off or when the program is off the air, uh, because it has you know repeat viewership. You want the you want the same viewer to come back and see you again to bring their friends and uh, get them to see the program as well. So they found uh, you know they they found that uh, doing these campaigns and keeping and continuing to engage with the users um, is has been very effective uh, because especially in India you don't have uh, as much of uh, DVR, uh, so so if you miss the program at just the right time, uh, you sort of miss the program. But uh, but by continuing to engage them, you can send reminders, and even if they miss it, you can send okay, what happened, the synopsis, and so on. So we've had uh, not just uh, basic contests and polls, but sort of uh, smart engagement uh, driving uh, driving repeat and referral. In, in this case, uh, re repeat views. Uh, or could be uh, purchases as well. Uh, you know, uh, e-commerce sites, eBay has been uh, uh, building community to drive loyalty, right? So, so they use uh, the, the concept of daily deals uh, as well as uh, as well as points. You know, based on purchases that they do. All of it run uh, through uh, through text messaging uh, in in this case. In fact. Um, you know, to add to this, uh, we've also seen interest from not just large brands but small businesses, right? Uh, uh, like, say, if you if you go to the Gloria Jeans, uh, you know, coffee store uh, out here, usually they'll give you a little card, and uh, every time you buy a coffee, they punch it, and after after ten coffees, the eleventh one is free, and uh, it's very you know, uh, it's sort of hard for. Uh, it's hard for the management to keep track of, you know, how many cards, how many people are coming back, who are the loyal ones, you know, who's gone to 40 or 50 coffees versus, you know, three or four, uh, et cetera. So even if they're rewarding the loyalty, uh, you know, there's, it's, it's, uh, they still don't know who these people are and such. Uh, and uh, one of the variants we've been uh, doing with some of these, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, these stores has been, to offer a, a, a text-based uh, loyalty program where you know you don't need to carry a card, right? Your phone is your is effectively your identifier, and uh, every time every time you purchase a coffee, you get a little card uh, a little card uh, with instructions on sending a text message, right? So it's an it's a coded number, a scratch code, and when you text that number, the system records it. You know it records how many coffees you have had, but more importantly, now you know who these people are. And you know how often they are coming, which store they are coming to. So if today they are in one store, tomorrow they are in a different store. Um, you know you can you can sort of aggregate uh, behavior, as well as capture it over a sustained sort of long uh, period of time. So so these uh, you know mobile-based uh, loyalty programs and mobile-based communities uh, to to drive loyalty, uh, where it's easy to keep track of uh, repeat usage and continued loyalty points and so on. Uh, are are continuing to gain adoption, and like I said, not just not just with uh, large brands as you might think about, but even lots and lots of uh, small small and medium businesses adopting this in a big way. And uh, you know, the the amazing thing is uh, when you hear the word loyalty program, you know, you might think you need uh, point of sale integration, you need some back end integration, and so on. Uh, but you know, the, the, these kind of simple text based uh, loyalty programs could be. You know, even the local panwala, even the local, you know, chaiwala can offer it, and uh, there's no there's no point of sale, right? It's all a, a cash ecosystem. But uh, even there, uh, you know, with minimal setup, at uh, at extremely low price points, you know, for a few hundred or a few thousand rupees, uh, people can get started. So I think it's 
it's sort of suddenly opening up the mobile medium uh, to to interesting uh, to interesting possibilities, uh, not not just for large advertisers but also for uh, SMEs. Um, so uh, another uh, thing is sort of you know contextual, uh, you know building a community with contextual selling, right? So an an insurance company who decided that their target segment was young parents, okay? Uh, so instead of uh, selling, um, instead of uh, just saying come and buy our insurance, uh, they they decided to engage uh, that community uh, and parents of young kids, right? What is it that they want to know? Uh, they don't want to know about school admissions and uh, you know sort of uh, viral season and problems you know where to buy toys and parenting tips and 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 things like that so uh, so they created you know uh, they, they created this community that engages parents uh, using content and context that that they care about right uh, that the that's what the parents care about and in the process sort of uh, building a relationship with the brand, uh, not with uh, explicit advertising, but sort of very implicit soft sell, uh, if you will. So so you're seeing that, uh, in fact, there's another example here of uh, the same thing where, uh, you know, so, we, you know, we have uh, uh, traffic police in, uh, in many cities in India, uh, Bombay, Delhi, Kolkata, Bangalore, and a few others, uh, sort of sending out daily traffic alerts to drivers and citizens in the city. Um, but what we are, you know, so this service is in fact uh, sponsored by ICICI Lombard, uh, which among the many things they sell car insurance, you know, auto insurance, and they want to naturally target the drivers that are users of this service. So, but instead of, again, saying just, hey, buy, buy our car insurance, right, they're providing, or they're at least sponsoring something of value uh, to those drivers, uh, building a community, engaging with them, and uh, sort of using that to drive leads, and it's among it's been among the most effective campaigns, uh, not just in sort of very measurable ways, but also in sort of intangible brand value. Where uh, you know I've heard anecdotes about uh, people just thanking them for providing such a valuable service. Where you know anybody who's driven around in Bombay uh, would know you know the, the the traffic issues there. The other interesting thing is you know mobile not just by itself enables engage, engagement, but it even makes other media engaging, right? Uh, for example, instead of a, a, a dumb billboard or a non-interactive, plain, simple billboard, you know, you can drive uh, responses similarly with uh, TV print campaigns uh, as well. Uh, that could make it, make it interesting. I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, and as we compare the effectiveness uh, of mobile, uh, mobile marketing campaigns, you know, if, if done right, uh, they can have a, an effect that's very different from that of traditional media, okay? Uh, if you, I mean, this is just a schematic, but if you look at traditional media, uh, when you run a massive TV or a print campaign, uh, the awareness increases, you reach a lot of users, and then gradually over time, once the campaign stops, it kind of decays out, and to revive that, you know, you sort of need to do the next campaign, and uh, that's how it typically goes. Uh, in mobile, on the other hand, right, first, uh, you can reach a lot more users, right? So, so certainly, you know, you can impact, uh, create, drive more impressions, uh, reach more users, and then when the campaign stops, if you will, you'll have, you know, you may have a similar kind of decay, but uh, if you also drive engagement, um, if you drive engagement, then what happens is the people that responded, you know, they don't go away. Uh, they, they stay and they engage with the brand and they bring their friends back in, okay? Uh, that then leads to a viral effect sort of uh, completely driven by word of mouth, right? So if you think about, um, now, you know, Gupshap itself is the best example of something like this, right? And in fact, we've never done any ad campaigns uh, uh, to acquire users. It's simply grown by word of mouth, but in three years, uh, we've acquired about 40 million users that continue to engage, uh, you know, with the service, and it's all, it's entirely spread by word of mouth. So, you know, even a company like ours, which wasn't a brand when we started, can drive uh, that kind of engagement, then certainly larger brands could do, you know, could do a lot more and a lot better. So I think, uh, you know, instead of just running a campaign, getting transactions, and then forgetting about those users, 
uh, if you actually hold them, engage them, and get them to come back and bring their friends back, it can have a, a, a dramatic impact where the, the cost of acquisition now, think about that, right? The, the cost of acquisition now over, over the whole campaign, uh, it, it sort of declines with every passing day because as the, as the engagement builds up, you're not spending any more uh, to acquire those users. You're sort of just supporting it, and the cost of that is a, is a lot lower. The amazing thing about most mobile campaigns is that it's completely measurable, right? Every aspect of it, you know, how many impressions were delivered, how many responses received, uh, how many, you know, how many of those responses converted to calls, to orders, the value of those orders, and therefore what's the uh, ROI and the, the cost of sale or cost of acquisition, all of which, uh, you know, leads to, and, and sort of doing this, if done right, uh, can really drive, you know, lots of customers, but also keep them coming back and uh, bringing their friends in as well. So, you know, as we, as we look ahead, uh, you know, as, uh, I think there's, there's even more interesting opportunities. I think location uh, has uh, barely been exploited or leveraged in terms of uh, marketing campaigns. Uh, I think a lot more, uh, a lot more, uh, we'll see a lot more happening along on, on this dimension. Uh, also personalization, as, as people use uh, various services more, and uh, and you know this, we can, we can build profiles uh, that enables greater targeting, less intrusive uh, campaigns, more contextual ads. Uh, that's both win-win, and that creates the win-win both for the consumer and the advertiser. Um, and last, and then lastly, also enab you know enabling of commerce. I mean, if you think about mobile advertising, the first wave or a, a lot of the early adopters have been sort of other vast companies, if you will, right? Selling uh, typically mobile content, mobile downloads, uh, games, ringtones, things like that. Uh, you haven't seen as much of sort of real world commerce companies um, adopting it, you know, selling it, using it to sell, uh, you know, sell cameras, TVs and such. It's, it's sort of beginning to happen in patches. People are doing it, but, but, but not as much. So I think uh, it's a huge opportunity. And in fact, that'll drive uh, in fact, you know, arguably the, the, the biggest driver of online advertising is really online commerce, right? Uh, sites like Amazon, eBay, they sell a ton of stuff and therefore are also the biggest sp spenders on online advertising. And I think uh, in, in mobile, uh, we'll see mobile commerce emerging as a, as a big portion of sort of overall commerce. And, and the good thing about mobile is there's sort of a, uh, you know, there's a built-in payment mechanism already available. People are used to paying for things. Uh, you know, every SMS, every voice call is you know, paid for. So whether it's operator billing or off, you know, outside the operator billing uh, systems as well. But the end-to-end -end commerce uh, mechanism, uh, as, as that's enabled and gets adopted, I think that should, uh, that should be another sort of massive growth spurt uh, for mobile marketing.